Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and it's only October, but I would say it's been a pretty quiet year so far for LG. But this is for sure their most underrated phone out right now. Uh, this is the LG V20. I don't know if you remember it, but back when Android 7.0 was first announced, it was this phone sitting down at the bottom of that website advertising that it would be the first one out the box with Android 7.0 Nougat installed. Not a Nexus, not a Pixel phone, but this one. And it still is, it's a thing now. So the, the hype has died down a little bit and it's been a little bit quieter, but the V20 is a really good phone from LG. So these are the five best things about it. Number five is the DAC. So this phone has a headphone jack, which we won't be able to take for granted much longer. But the DAC behind it is not just your normal, typical digital to analog converter. So the V20 is rocking a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC for significantly improved headphone and speaker audio performance. Now the speakers themselves, I wouldn't say are extraordinary. I mean, one of them is front facing and they do get pretty good and loud. So if that's something you care about, that's a good sign. But where you'll really hear the difference is with headphones. You might not necessarily notice a difference in audio quality right off the bat, even with the great headphones that come with it. But with the quad DAC, what it will do is drive higher impedance headphones. So if you have higher end headphones that require much more power, even too much power to get much sound out of previous phones, this one is up to the task. You will be able to drive much higher impedance headphones with the quad DAC and the V20. So that is a nice bonus. If you used to try to drive high end headphones with a smartphone before, you needed to buy like a mobile DAC external to the phone so you'd carry around extra things and you'd have to remember to take it with you. You don't have to do any of that with the V20. This phone will handle all of them. So number four is the hardware and just the overall build quality and fit and finish of the V20. It is a lot better than the G5 from earlier this year. Not that that was a very high bar to clear, but still, this is a seriously well-built phone this time around. It's a unibody aluminum phone from top to bottom, and it actually is really, it feels really light. Like it feels like it should be heavier for the size of the phone, but it's really balanced across that size in the hand. The forehead's not too big, the chin's not too big. You got a pretty good use of space fitting a 5.7 inch quad HD display onto the front of this body size and it has a ton of bonuses. It's military grade shock resistant against drops. It has a fingerprint reader on the back that's really quick and also doubles as your power button and the sleep wake switch. It has a 3200 milliamp hour removable battery and the way it removes in this version is the button on the side that pops the back off and it is way cleaner than the G5's method which would just force shut down the phone immediately. So you can open the back and this way lets you take off the back without shutting down the phone, which you might want to do because there's also expandable storage, a micro SD card slot. So those last two things right there, the removable battery and expandable storage on a high-end smartphone by themselves kind of make it a rare breed. So number three is the secondary display. This is an LG thing for sure. They did it in the V10 and I'm happy they're keeping it going with the V20. So it's the secondary display right up in the top of the phone above the main display. This second screen is like a dock for permanent shortcuts to things you might do often. So toggles for some settings, etc. some quick Wi-Fi toggle, a quick flashlight toggle. Obviously it's even faster than dragging down the notification shade and then finding what you want and selecting it because you can leave it there all the time forever, just one click. I do wish two things though. One, I wish I had more control over what exactly shows up on this top screen. If I had it my way, I would have just one top screen permanently, no swiping at all, and then I would just have this as a mixture of some apps and some shortcuts. So I'd have some of my favorite apps to launch all the time and some of my favorite quick settings toggles. Like I'd have my favorite Twitter app, I'd have Phoenix up here, I'd probably have a camera app shortcut, but I'd also have like a Wi-Fi toggle, a Bluetooth pair button, probably a flashlight. But as of right now, it's just whatever LG sees fit. And the other thing is I'm still not sure about the position of the screen on the top of the phone. Especially for people with smaller hands than me, this is not easy to reach. And if you're trying to make it a shortcut thing, you wanna make it as accessible as possible. So I don't know, maybe put it on the bottom of the phone, maybe try another location other than up at the top above everything, which is kind of a stretch for most people, but that's just me. All right, so the number two best feature in the V20 is these dual cameras on the back. So this is also a very LG thing. They've been doing it before. So no, the iPhone is not the first one to do dual cameras. In fact, this one's not the first one. The LG did it in previous phones with their G5. They did it in the V10. And I've done an entire video explaining all of the way dual cameras work in smartphones, what they do, why they're useful. So I'll leave that video linked below the like button if you wanna check it out. For those unfamiliar, the V20 is rocking one 16 megapixel regular field of view camera and one eight megapixel, 135 degree super wide angle camera. So yeah, every phone with dual cameras seems to have a different way of utilizing them. And this LG way is pretty much purely for recreation. Sometimes for utility, if you're really close to a subject and you wanna get zoomed out wide, 
but the imagery from the second camera doesn't really get used to supplement the image from the first camera or vice versa. They're totally independent cameras which you can switch between to get a different look. And that super wide angle camera does look really cool. It's kind of like that GoPro look. So the cameras look really fun, plus there's a bunch of other bonuses like having really good optical image stabilization, there's study shot 2.0 for video, and you have all your manual modes for photos and videos. You have your raw photo capability, you have your improved microphone for better sensitivity for recording audio in like loud environments. So in general, this is shaping up to be a pretty great Android smartphone camera. And then last but not least, the number one best feature of the LG V20 is the software. This is, like we mentioned earlier, the first phone running out the box Android 7.0 Nougat, which is an interesting choice because this one's already skinned. So it's Android 7.0 Nougat with the LG UI on top of it. And we're gonna see more Android 7.0 unskinned on some phones coming up very soon, but until then, we still get to see plenty of Nougat's features in action. So there's Google's in-app search, which lets you search your entire phone through all the apps installed. Uh, you get Doze, of course, which optimizes apps for standby. And while this is a pre-production model, I do have to mention the standby time has been actually amazing. Seriously impressive. Uh, I slept it for like 24 straight hours with the second screen still on, and I woke it up with 96% left. So that kind of blew my mind. Still basically a full battery. That's nice. Uh, you get the new Vulkan API for gaming performance with the apps that do support it. And you get a direct reply feature, though it is already skinned. And you get the multi-window multitasking, although that's already skinned too. So believe it or not, you might have noticed this already. You get the choice to have no app drawer and just have all your icons spread out across your home screens like it in, I guess, like an iPhone. But that's not a requirement of Android N or anything. That's just an option here. Like Pixel Launcher is still a thing. Don't get worried. But I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, and performance throughout the whole OS, as you can see on the phone, has been pretty solid. So this turned into a pretty complete package as far as Android smartphones go. You know, the specs, Snapdragon 820, Adreno 530, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage before you expand it, Quick Charge 3.0, USB Type-C, I mean, it's all there. It's still very LG, meaning the cameras at the back are still that LG style with the dual cameras. It's still got that second display up at the top and you can only let LG choose what can go there when and all the other things like the skin that's on top of the software. But as of right now, this is still the only phone that you can get out the box with Android 7.0 Nougat, and it turns out to be a really good one. So I wouldn't turn you away from it. You should check it out. I'll link it below. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.